something like see, grabbing with the muscle. We're going to use an unbendable arm. We're going to use an unbendable arm here. We're going to use an unbendable arm here. Unbendable arm doesn't have to be straight. Yeah. We're going to use an unbendable leg. This technique is designed to break this, break this, and break this. We're going to get one of the three. Are we happy? Yeah. <laughs> 
the idea? Huh? Lock, strike. Now this one is going to go behind, as this, you don't move, as this is going to go around the seats. And I'm going to bring his shoulder to me as I am extending up with my palm. And you're going to find a certain locking principle. So I'm not flexing my muscle like I'm doing a curl or lifting a weight. I'm extending up and I'm bringing him towards me. Okay. See this move? This next move, the guy in Japan made 13th degree with. He's 180 pounds and he's never defeated. The judo guy, that's one. He said, he said, well, most people, they stick their foot in and then they swing around and they get underneath and they throw the guy. He said, but what if the guy's a big sumo guy? No, what am I going to do? He was smart enough to pay that and frame principle that said what you do is you step to the center, you take a step, then you step, take another step to create his balance. I had his ankle kind of up there. Okay, don't let me hurt you. It would be too late. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Valari taught me this technique to help the woman. Then come back. Just two hands were on one. No fair, can't do that. Do we do it? Thank you. Guy needs to it like plan. French guy in the 1890s was taking a terrible beating. He's getting on the guard, right? And this right hand, boom, it was coming all day and it wasn't, ugh, oh, much he was doing about it. So he docked and he turned, boom. Kill the guy. Boom, just like that. Kill the guy. And it was just, ah! He went back to the drawing board and said, well, there's something to this. <laughs> a couple months later, he had another fight. another guy. In the 1890s, that move was made illegal by Western boxing. Why? We work too well. Do we use it? <laughs> Are we allowed to thumb the eye in any kind of sport? Do we do it? Do we bite the nose? Do we knee the groin? Do we kick the knees? Do we seize the throat? Why? Works just works well. So when you're practicing with somebody, you've got to kind of get a feeling for how hard and how fast you can do it. Hopefully you'll be able to communicate how you can practice doing some of this stuff fast without hurting each other. Okay? But the stuff works too well. Okay? And, it, and Sometimes, see, this is just, you know, going to kick this guy's leg. We're going to kick it hard. You don't necessarily have to lock the thing this stuff. Okay? Then we punch out. Okay, now watch the technique. Deflect down. We're striking. We're striking. We're stepping. We're seizing. And this is coming in. Oops, sorry, I don't want to hurt you. Now watch, watch, watch when I do this. Which way is his knee going? The wrong way. <laughs> is there any out for him? Just to snap it. It's not nice, is it? And I mean, we have an unusual advantage of things in here that we can just kind of get nasty with on the way down. Does that make sense? Here's the technique. Now watch, let me show you how you can practice it so you don't hurt anybody. If this foot goes in far enough, I can take a lot of my leg and put it on a lot of his leg so I don't think it's need too much. Let me show you. If I get far enough in, see my upper part of my leg? So you still start to go a little bit. I don't want to drop. Watch. Watch. Now, get back up there. <laughs> See how my heel is off the ground? If I come through with my heel off the ground, that's how my safety jack goes, because when my heel hits the ground, so he starts going that way, but his shoulder would be going this way. Oh. <laughs> yeah, do it this way. This way. Okay. Step through. Okay. Just as the heel hits the ground. Looks terrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Field work! <It's> terrible. <laughs> Tastes great, <but> I'm sure. <laughs> Okay? Now, this is just a practice of technique. I'll show you how to do this a little bit more spine, a little bit more thing principle. The farther you are out, the more you have to take it to the the side. And if he doesn't know how to do a split, <laughs> <laughs> Make sense? Right? That looked terrible, didn't it? It is. It's terrible. Now, 
Well, let me, I won't explain too much about the fight. You don't want this stuff. I'll, I'll show you how to use it. Sort of loose, loose inspiring. Don't work at about an even pace. That's about the pace that you want. Keep that heel off the ground. There's, there's two secrets. One secret is that this shoulder, what place, right? This shoulder comes towards you, and all the weight is on the right leg going down. No weight goes to my left. All my weight stays on my right leg, see? Like this. Stays on the right as I'm moving up. Doesn't do too good, does it? Now, think about this. Your opponent, he's a real high charger, he's real low to the ground. He's, he's a real good shuffler, he's coming in high. Take a hard stance, like they just, you have to move like, just, just come in. Come in. Yeah, now get down a little bit. Now the lower he gets, the more damage that's going to do to the knee joint. Now stand up kind of light, see? Like you're floating around. Now, see, the, the higher he is, the quicker his balance is going to go. So either his knee breaks or his balance breaks. Do I care? <laughs> Something's going to go. <coughs> Something's going to break. Does make sense? Okay. You like it. That's one punch, right? You can do this from in close, hands on. It doesn't have to be doing this movement. But I want you to practice, say, the body. Keep your head up. The body. Say, the body is going to strike. And I'm extending and I'm reaching. Make sense? I point the top of my head, let's see there. I won't hurt you. I point the top of my head, see? See, it's going to get a little bit more. And I point the top of my head. That's why I'm snapping like this. Doing the technique. All right? You see it? Try, try. Try, try. <laughs> <laughs> Here we stop one second. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Let's just do the feet. Step back. You're in a cat stance. Step forward at an angle. Cross behind. Slide this foot back. You're facing this angle. Once again. Now we block. Downward block. This can all be done with one hand. Strike. Now as the foot crosses behind, seize the shoulder. Bend the weight. Bend the weight. Drop the weight on the right foot as this slides back. And technically, where's my man? Get back for a second. I gotta do this slow, so I won't hurt you. Technically, this is how Mr. Valari taught it to me. So you're going down. Go, go, go. I won't hurt you. I, I don't want to hurt him. If you go down hard, you'll go down just like this. And when your palm hits the ground, okay? Now, if you do it fast, his head is facing the other way. <laughs> if you do it, oh! <laughs> if you do it fast, it breaks his neck and his shoulder at the same time. So you do it. Thanks. So you do it, so block, strike, like, all the way down like this. That's why you pin to the ground. <laughs> Where are the kids on that bus? Where's my girlfriend? <laughs> What'd you say about my carrot eating her anymore? <laughs> okay? But you put him in a position and you can lock him up by following all the way down to the ground. And you what? You do an unbendable arm all the way down to the ground. It's all done with one hand. Does that make sense? Let's do it. Let's do it going this way one more time. One, two, three, four. Okay, the more you want to hurt him, the more you go down. The more you want to hurt him, the more you put that left heel on the ground. Got it? Try, try. Thank <laughs> you.
Get your position back. Your position. Okay, see his leg? You just see his brain. Okay. <laughs> see how his weight has got on that forward foot? See, that makes it safe. See? It's just that much more to go. Okay, don't, you don't have to change. Everything's good. See, there's nothing wrong with what he's doing. It's just a bet. Everything's a bet. It's a matter of whether the bet is going to pay off. This thing is designed so it doesn't matter what his bet is, he's going to lose somewhere. You know, it's like if you're playing roulette, and you know it's going to come up on one of the numbers, either red or black. <laughs> okay. Don't play with that now. <laughs> okay. Now, what you want to do is you want to create like a V with your D. See this foot? You want to think like you're creating a V here. And that your left foot, as it comes inside, is on one side of the V, and your right side, right foot is on the other side of the V. Okay? So that you are, why don't we turn around? Because most people are facing this way. Okay. Great. I want to get this foot by his big toe. Draw a line here. I want to get my left foot by his foot, and I want to get my right foot by his foot. The farther these are away, the harder this is to get. The closer this is, see, the easier it is to get. Does that make sense? Well, if I try to do it far away, see, see how far he is? i got to bring him, see, close. So I want to be closer to start. I know. See what you're doing? I had to punch for the headmaster for about five years. You learn faster. That's the fact that this guy to learn, because he's feeling it and seeing it. And feeling it and feeling it. Okay. So think about creating a V with that. All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Does that make sense? Why don't I have you try it right-handed so you can try it right-handed, all right-handed. Have one punch with your left. Have one punch with your left. Yeah, that one. There you go. Okay. All right. So we strike with our right. We step. See, yes. Right foot, right hand. Step, right foot this way. Does that make sense? So he's going to punch with the left. See, by having a heavy, heavy leg there, see how it's going to make it next. Worse it? More worse? Worse it? I don't know. It's going to be painful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And see, from this position, you kind of drop him right down and kind of tie him up. It's always meant to go that way. Right? Okay, just try it for a minute more. Thanks. Thank you very much.
Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no permanent answer. What does that feel like right now? Gotta lose your will to fight, don't you? Oh yeah. If I just take the meridian that makes all those fears come to his brain, you can control how this guy feels what's going on. Over the shoulder like this. Maybe I'll get into a little bit of snack. Do you want me to get some snack? Yeah. Why don't I give you a little bit of each animal? How's that? Yeah. A little bit of each animal? Sure. Okay. So it'll sort of give you a way to fish rather than just throwing it there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just trying to get there. Okay, this is Crane Principle. I'll get through this sort of quick then. The Crane Principle. That's sort of gone now, isn't it? I think so. It's <laughs> <laughs> still sort of numb, right? Yeah. Now, did I look like I tried to kick him hard? No. Uh-huh. A little? <laughs> you think we had a balloon? Yeah. I won't kick it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm not going to relax. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, flex his own gap. See, most people don't kick to the inside like this. There's a big nerve in here. See? Yeah, I'm not going to take that. Because I just want to dig in again because I don't want to make the blood do that. But there's ways of see, kicking this so that if his weight comes up. Now, if I put a bendable leg to this, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to kick any harder than that. Hey, feel that even when she's in the top of it. I don't know. If you want to join, she's not like no one. Okay? Yeah, it's all right. Okay. I'm going to make my quest. Okay, now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I mean, you can take the knees out and stuff. If you kick in here. I mean, just think if I did that kicking it this way. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just had a religious experience. I think the man died and he came out of here. <laughs> you can feel it though, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't need a lot of snap in your kick if you got the weight right. The snap is great. You learn to put a little bit more snap into it later. It's a crane kick. A different type of a kick. You actually learn. So you gotta do a little thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I didn't look like I was really doing it real hard, right? The first one I did a little kind of bit, but I didn't want to make them go down. I showed the police how to do it. Take guys right down off the ground and just jump from a crowd. So you can always stop. Nobody sees anything. The guy just ends up on the ground. You know, in front of the judge. There's no head injury. There's no rapid. And 72 hours later, the bruise is gone. The guy that will walks like this for about three days. <laughs> okay, now think about this. If I, if I kick this guy like this, is he going to step and punch me? <laughs> is he going to step and kick me? No, no. Can he step and punch with this one? If he's on one leg, how well can he grapple? You realize the best thing he can do is kick me with the, lo- the leg he can't feel? It's <laughs> <laughs> a bad bet for him, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with all parts of the body. You can kind of, you, you, you learn how to drop your weight and use your shoulder. And it comes out of the embedded line principle. You have to be careful with it because it's real easy to hurt somebody. Worse than you think, what? I'm sorry, it's good. 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 It's you learn the crane kick to kick three fingers below the navel. Because if you stop a point three fingers below the navel, the rest of the body loses leverage on coming forward. So you can stop a guy, regardless of how big he is, pretty much. If you learn how to put your weight into the kick, just like you were putting, I don't want to make any marks on this wall, but just like you're putting your weight in, into the wall, see, and you create the push like this. You create the push. See? See, I'm not really... <laughs> it doesn't look like much, but you, so you do, you create just a little bit of a juice. Like so, if you kick the bag and you fall off a bit, that's not right. The idea is to use the resistance to tell you where it's going to go. You can do the same thing. You can stand on one leg and a guy can't move you. I, if I had more time, I'd show you how to do it. It's you don't need a big, a big strong stance to be stable. You just got to learn the shape of your body. Mr. Valari teaches us the shape of the body. That's power. 
in the shape where the body is, the feet are sort of close together, it gives you develop rotational strength. Okay, so the crane you're looking for, say, using a circle this way, and off of what? Stop in the center, you what? Attack his guard or his head. Now, turn it slow, slow. Boom, say, if I uh, make him do this, right? You ever try to block a punch to your head? <laughs> it doesn't work real well. You can sort of do some punches and stuff, but it can't protect your head. So you stop in the center, you're attacking the head. Where's the guy's mind? The guy's mind is going from here, upper left door. Right? Where's his mind going? From, I'm going from what? Kick to strike. I've covered how many ways of strike, uh, how many ways of fighting? <clears throat> Two of the four ways of fighting, right? From there I am, what? Whether I get the arm, you to help me. <laughs> so I'm either going to get the arm, a lock, I'm going to fell him. His mind is going from here to here, and all of a sudden the attack is coming in down here. Now let me ask you something. When you're aspiring, you're fighting, and you're thinking maybe we're playing dirty today, okay? We're practicing fighting, taking kneecaps, whacking shins, right? To kind of protect that lead leg a little bit, right? Right? Mm -hmm. You'll protect that lead guard, you know, and you'll try to keep him away and soft hit him. What's the thing that everybody forgets about the attack? Back, leg. That's the last thing that everybody thinks about protecting. Hey, this is way over here. He can't get that. You worry about this side, you think about using it on him. But you don't think about him doing something to that. Agreed? Mm -hmm. The farthest thing that's away. So we're taking his mind and going from here to here, and all of a sudden, this light is lighting up down here. Do we care if the other two don't work, but we get the crunching this real good? Are we having fun yet? <laughs> We're having fun. Real simple system to practice the four ways of fighting. And if, if you come with me, slow, I don't want yet. Okay, now, his arm is up, his on guard, get on guard. And there isn't anything here. Boom. I just hit him with the unbendable arm to the back of the head. So the back of the head's going this way as his body's going that way. That's not nice either. <laughs> and you can hit that guy a ton. This is where all his motor stuff is. And when the new level guy goes down, messages to the brain. So you're cutting off the messages from the computer to how the soldiers are going to work in the field. What kind of chance does he have? It's not good. It's not good. And are you worried about your <coughs> wrist bending? No. I mean, you go, whack! You don't have to think much, do you? Now, the faster you can make your body turn, see? Now, what are you doing? You're moving your feet. See, to move your body to turn. So all of a sudden, you end up with a big wall up here if you're also doing a wall up down here. Opposite points of balance. Make sense? What is the chances of this guy's mind thinking that far? Fewer than two people in a million can go to the fourth balance or mind moment without flashing out. You watch Western boxing, what is it? Jab. One, two. Grab, 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 grab. Or one. They try to do the one big one. Jab, keep them away. Jab. One, two. Cover up. <coughs> Watch the kickboxing. It's the kick. It's the kick. It's the punch. A real good kicker. He throws one kick to ball to set up the other kick. They go two moves. Primal. Why? Because as long as they've been walking, they've been going one, two, one, two, one, two. You take a hundred people and you put a bucket of margaritas in them. I mean a big bucket of a straw. And you put on some music and they can all go. <laughs> One, two. One, two. Because it's primal, it's something that you don't think about. Okay. That primal, something that you don't think about, is called a void, and you're entering the void. It's something that's predictable in all men. It's a big three-dimensional world. Don't see too many people walking on their hands these days down the street. It's something that's always available for you to take. You're going to what? The first, second, third, fourth mind moment. Yeah, all the way down to the ground. At the same time, you're leading his defenses in the wrong direction if you're attacking down here. Me going, him coming to me. Huh. Left foot, left. It doesn't matter whether this is a forward foot or a back foot. This way. Me going to him. You make him feel a little uncomfortable as he moves. <laughs> you attack, it's all right. Him coming to me. Left, left, 
left. Me going to him. You make him feel a little uncomfortable. Right, right, right. How much thinking you got to do? Do you care which side he's got forward? Do you care whether he leads or you lead? All you got to decide is, do I feel good enough about attacking him? Or am I going to keep stopping him until he gets a little frustrated? When he gets a line right here, when he gets a line right here, okay? That's when to attack. Why he's confused? Ask me a question that I don't know the answer to. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is the reverse people fetcher? Is it aspects of Johnson Rod? You know? Ask me a question I know the answer to. Ah. This opens up. This opens up. Right? Oh, I know the answer. Oh, of course, I know the answer to you. <laughs> but, gee, I don't, I don't know what I got to do to beat you. You know? Create that line. Like a big prune, big raisin right here. You know, second and lemon. Your energy's coming together. You want to open this. You want to draw this slightly, pull. You want to close this barely. You want to project your eyes like Superman, like a laser beam as you're hitting. And that projection is how you're reaching with your mind doing the unbendable arm. And it has an unusual effect because it is electromagnetic <coughs> energy hitting what? A hairy water bag. <laughs> <laughs> now, does water conduct electricity? Yeah. So all of a sudden, he's getting a jolt. Hey, that's not fun. You're plugging him in. The truth is this. I got a, I got a lady, about 50 years old, she's going for a black belt test today down in Florida. Her son's a, a second degree. And she's about 88 pounds, size 3 dress. She stands about this tall. She's put all the pads on. You know, you got to aspire on the black belt test. you got to be real good, you know. She put the pads on. She put the pads on the elbow pads. She had every pad. She, there wasn't a pad she didn't own. She had maybe duplicates of in case she lost one. You know, she'd come out. <laughs> You're going to work on your blocking drills now. <laughs> she get bruised. She get bruised. Couldn't stand it. I finally showed her some of the unbendable. This is secret stuff, sort of. Okay? I showed her the unbendable arm. I tried to show her how to block with it. Right? Two weeks, she comes out. No pad? Yeah. <laughs> I did it at home with my husband. <laughs> then I did it with my son. You know what? Did it hurt them? And I didn't feel a thing. When you're moving the energy through, you don't bruise. <coughs> when you're not moving the energy through, for some reason you bruise. I mean, you feel a little something. And is it possible to get a little bit of bruise? Yeah. But not like you would. You don't feel pain. He gets all of the pain. And come to find out, the more physical energy he puts into it, the more you're like a mirror, and he gets the zap. Okay? So, before I go on to the next thing, I'll just make next for you. The left foot, he's coming to me. Same stance. You don't care what he's doing. I'm tired of waiting for the guy. Now it's the right foot. I'm going to him. Does that make sense? I'm not saying you don't make it, see, make him feel a little com uncomfortable as you go to attack. You don't just go, <laughs> here I come. You still have to put it in a sequence. But once you create that movement of being on one foot or his back foot movement, then it's time. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, once you try it for like a minute apiece, then I'll get on to the next one. Okay, right. Yeah, I'm 
twist and pulls out. To puncture veins, nerves, and arteries inside the body with or without masks. It feels like a piping hot screwdriver. Coming in, coming out. When it's done right, loose. Okay? I'm not going to show you how to do that yet. Well, no, I won't. Okay. <laughs> or you can use it just striking with the thumb. Okay? Take your two fingers and press them down under the thumb until you flex this muscle. Just go like this. Is it hard? And it's surprisingly hard? Yeah? Okay. The thumb. Yeah, right? Okay. Boom. Now, the doctors that we work with, they work with manic depressants. You know what manic depressant is? Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, they kind of, they get to a point where they don't care. They cut themselves, they cut you, they don't care. Right? Now, you don't want to hurt the guy, you want to stop him from hurting himself. You don't have weapons, you're inside some kind of nuthouse. Just in, just like this. Okay, now, five meridians go over the shoulder and up to the head. One inch under the ear and behind is the optimal place to strike without creating any permanent damage that messes up how he feels about up and down. He loses the feeling of the ground. Now, no matter what the guy's skill is, it's kind of developed like take that bag a thousand times for a thousand days. It's all the ground. It's sort of the same, right? Now put him on a boat. Have him do a form. Right? He's going to lose his feeling of the ground. Now, his body doesn't go like that, but his mind does. Okay? Uh, I'm bad. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now. Go right to that. Okay. All I'm going to do is a little bit like this. Just turn a little bit.
So, all I want you to do is this right now. Take these two thumbs, just put them on either side, and just go push them in for a second, then back off an inch. And think like you're throwing a dart, whoom, into the wall, and the dart is sticking in. So it's like drawing a magnet, magnetically just, it's drawn in. It doesn't go, whoop, and come off. It goes in, and it, mm, mm, you conduct the juice through it. And I'll teach you snake that snake. Okay? Here, I'll try it. See if I go like this, pull back. Right? You'll get away. If I go like this, see? Yeah, see? <laughs> he actually is closing, he's pulling his own throat out. Right? I'm trying not to hurt him. Okay? Now, it has to do with the anatomics of it. This face, this face, and this point are the dangerous ones. Straight in the back is not good. This face, this face, and the straight. So when you're, it's the front hand, I'm going to hit you, I'm not going to hit you. It's the front side, the front core. If you hit that point, those points, think about the box. If those points, or you hit that face, it has to do with the carotid artery, the vagus nerve, trachea, and glands in here. It just creates an unusual effect on the body. Okay? So, when you're trying to take a guy and you want to kind of say, you know, hey, come with me, you want to grab two of those points, and it doesn't matter from where you are, it doesn't matter where you are, you want to grab a box, two points across. That, so that the sides don't have any kind of vital... No, this is where it, you got to whack it real, real hard to do damage all the way down to the cervical vertebrae. Okay? In here, there's a lot of fleshy material and there's really not a lot. But there is sensation that runs through there. Finds a force, meridian. 
Okay, they won't, they won't do that. And you'll like, it's like seeing a stream and go splush. And it's got to take a second before it'll get back to normal again. Okay? You can speed them up and you can slow them down. Sedate them or tone them fine. Okay? And, you, and, and understanding this also teaches you how to heal. The poison hand also teaches how to heal. Just whether you give them a lot of juice, that's you know, like a massage. Okay? Now, okay, half one time. Protect your head. Now, this one's going to come down, temple, side of the neck, just like I showed you. Okay? Temple, side of the neck. Think like, see, we go back, we fall back and move the head a little bit to the side, we pull, we snap in like this. Could we go like this? Yeah, same technique. I'm just going to teach you the one I was taught. Okay? Let's see. Okay? This one is hitting the point in the groin. This one is dropping. See? That doesn't look like much, does it? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm relaxing and I'm bending the line. Okay? It's a snake. Here? Okay? Okay. Right I know I'm hitting you hard, but we can break his neck like this. We can use it to calm or you can hit a point. So you're really hitting with the whole limb, <coughs> dropping. Okay? This hooks up, it strikes in, and that takes him down. Okay? Punch. One, two, three, four. Circles. Lock, kick. Find his knee. Bend the leg you're standing on as you push him down. See the strength of his body? Where is it? It's nowhere. Okay. I know. Walk away. Take that knee. This way. One. Two. This is going to be outside, it can be inside. Doesn't matter. Two. See? Loose. See? You throw. Doesn't look like that. I don't want to hit him. Okay? Here. Lock. Seize. We really kick to the knee, to the uh, to the head. We're not going to do that. Kick into the center. Press his head down. Push the knee just below the kneecap and bend on the leg you're standing on. You find it's very difficult to stand. It's almost impossible to stand. It's a nice take down to find for, for real. Okay, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, very easy to take him down. Okay, okay. Everybody up, let's try to get it. Snake. One. Two snakes rising. Say it's like if you step on a snake, the two ends come up. The two hands are the two ends. Loose, right? This is like when you're real tired. You don't have any more strength. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's snapping. Oh. Like this. Left hand goes down. Right hand goes up. Boom. So our first power went this way. See, parallel. Our next power goes perpendicular. So if he was good at stopping this, he's having a tough time stopping this. If we got him here a little bit, he's kind of bending over, so this is a heavy thud. And this comes up, knee comes up, and the leg is standing on. Come down. That's right. Keep all your weight on your left foot when you do that. Here we go again. <coughs> One. Jim Bryant technique from Mr. Valari. Two. Three. Four. There we go. All the way off of that foot, see? All the way off of that foot. Once again. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, try it in the air on your own. One, uh, in here. Come down on that. And you can take a look at your on. Ten. Point. Or anywhere. The snake drops its whole body. Body weight knocks it down and brings the thing around to the point that's going to pull the tail around and going to take the air out of it. Yeah, thanks. You got to be real loose. You got to feel like you just had a pillow fight with 40 munchkins and they wouldn't stop. You know, it's like you got to be kind of, kind of loose. Knock something up. 
Knock it down. Okay, yeah. when you think you got it, tear off. Yeah. <laughs> 